Hey guys, how's it going? Shez back again and welcome to another episode of the Atletico Madrid career mode here on FIFA 15. We're into episode number 10 now, double figures in this series as well, so all three series are going down particularly well. If you enjoy this video, feel free to hit that like button, maybe we could hit close to 200 again on this Atleti series. If you missed anything else over the weekend, like the My Play already, maybe even any of the Chelsea episodes last week, feel free to check the channel page and you'll be able to see anything that you may have missed over there. But today we're trying to build on the uh, fantastic form that we put together in yesterday's episode if you missed it link in the bottom left hand side of your screen or like I say uh, check the channel page but the uh, the video was called unbelievable Jeff and there definitely were some unbelievable things happening we're hoping for some equally fantastic results today we start with a game at home against Depor or Deportivo La Coruña and they're a team that have kind of fallen from grace in recent years you go back say a decade or so when they were playing like L Liverpool in the Champions League etc or in the Europa League on a consistent basis and they've been kind of a yo-yo side in recent years between uh, La Liga and Liga Adelante so I was hoping that it wasn't going to be too much of an issue to play against them today as they haven't got the strongest of sides. They've got uh, Isaac Cuenca from, uh, from Barcelona. I'm not sure whether that's a permanent or a loan deal, but he is a very, very good winger. But we fortunately are able to take the lead there. Arda Turan with the header, well saved by the goalkeeper, but it only fell as, foul, uh, fell as far as Raul Garcia, and uh, we took a 1-0 lead. But they were going to try and come back at me, but lost possession critically in the midfield quite a few times. It was a bit of one of, well, if it was effectively one of their main weaknesses as a side, and Thiago managed to skip past the defender there. I was really disappointed with that finish. He really should have done better with that. The uh, the defender there, the big bulky guy, was uh, uh, so hard to get past. He was really, really strong and uh, I found it quite a bit of an issue. I tended to go for uh, the other guy, the smaller guy there, that just lunged in with a tackle. He was the one I tried to, uh, tried to pinpoint and aim all of my attacks through and uh, fortunately it paid off this particular time because Arda Turan was able to come through and, uh, and score a rather nice goal. You see we've got an achievement there, toe poke. Actually this finish, you're going to have to let me know in the comment section if you agree, it reminded me a lot of Leo Messi. That's the sort of finish that Messi might do. He almost scooped it with his, uh, with his toes, looped it up over the goalkeeper. The third replay angle shows it perfectly. This, that finish outside the left uh, foot with the, the top of his toes just scoops it up and over the goalkeeper and it kind of loops and uh, banana shots into the back of the net. That was Leo Messi-esque and Arda Turan really has stepped up his game in the past couple of episodes. He's been absolutely phenomenal. I could not be more impressed with uh, the way he plays and he feels fantastic to play with as well. But Diego Godin keeps us in the game there with a wonderful block on uh, Helder Postiga's shot to uh, block that one, make it go deflect over the top of uh, over the top of the net. Helder Postiga is a player that also has kind of fallen from grace as a professional, but you're just going to get a stroke of luck. We put in a great challenge there to uh, to put the ball out for the corner, and then Gabby chests the ball into his own net from the corner and puts his leg through the post. So that was a bit of a clusterfuck, and Depor were actually back in the game at 2-1. I was thinking this might be a bit of an issue, and as you can see, they're coming forward, but Wanfran gets a good tackle in there, and then we counter on the map pace. You can see they've pushed a lot of men forward. There's not many defenders back here at all and it's Lopo the slow uh, weaker defender that we were uh, pinpointing earlier on as the main weakness in their back line and actually he gets caught out Koke is the man that run on, runs onto the end of it recently on the pitch he and Arda Turan have been uh, battling with each other for a first team spot but who's the first man across there to congratulate uh, Koke for scoring the third goal and putting the tie to bed Arda Turan he's just a wonderful professional right now and a fantastic player and I'm really enjoying playing with him and as you can see the board are recognizing the sort of form that we're in right now they said uh, well it says wood dear Chez effectively will say on behalf of the board I want to acknowledge all of the work and dedication that we've seen you bring to the club we know you've had a lot of pressure and speculation from the press and we want to reassure you that we're behind you to carry forward the Atletico Madrid legacy which is rather nice to hear considering we, uh, we we've had a good start to this season but we've kind of found ourselves right now coming out of a bit of a dodgy period so it's nice to get the reassurance from the board but here's your team news the Atletico Madrid lineup Miranda starts alongside Jose Maria Jimenez in the heart of defense Antoine Griezmann plays with Christian Rodriguez out wide Mario Mandzukic is the main striker today so our first Spanish Cup tie of the season all told. Of course, uh, we had the game at the beginning of the year against uh, Real Madrid as kind of the Spanish Super Cup because uh, we won the league and they won the, uh, this particular competition that we're playing in now. We got off to a fantastic start. It's two legs against Almeria here in the Spanish Cup. So the, uh, the overall result in this tie isn't necessarily going to decide what happens in the tie overall but we couldn't have gotten off to a better start and Griezmann is a player that really needs to impress me because the January transfer window is coming up I've got a couple of players in mind that I might like to buy 
and Griezmann, who really hasn't impressed me at all since being at Atleti. It's actually, unfortunately, a player that I've never really gotten on with in any FIFA, and uh, he's not impressed me here at Atleti. I know he's a new-ish signing here. Well, he's a new signing for uh, for this particular season at Atleti in real life. We didn't sign him because we disabled the initial transfer window, but he was already here when we started the uh, the series. But they came close there to an equaliser, Almeria, who uh, strike the outside of the post. Fortunately for me, it bounced away and not in towards the, uh, the back of the net, so we do keep our lead for the time being. But yeah, I've got a couple of players in mind that uh, I might like to buy in January. So I will be letting you know over the next couple of episodes as we get closer to that time what sort of players I might want to, uh, to be leaving the club or what sort of players I might like to bring into the club. But they hit the post and then we hit the post there through uh, Raul Garcia's header. And then Christian Rodriguez really should have done better with that. I purposefully brought the ball inside onto his left foot and he still tried to play it with his right, which crucially was the reason why he wasn't quite able to get the angle on it. He wanted to find the back of the net and unfortunately we weren't able to extend our lead. But Santos is going to put in a great cross here, finds Q in the box and that is a pinpoint header down into the bottom left-hand side of the goal. A black or oblack as I've been told to uh, over pronounce the O in the comments, you'll have to let me know if uh, that is the right pronunciation or not, I'm not entirely too sure, but he hasn't seen too much first team football this season, not through any fault of his own, mainly just because Miguel Moya has been absolutely superb, but he made a couple of mistakes in recent episodes, so I gave Oblak the chance to, uh, to have a, a go in this game, unfortunately he didn't quite keep a clean sheet, but we were able to get a draw out of the game here against Almeria we'll go into the second leg, uh, hopefully be able to, uh, to start a stronger side, because I kept a few players back, because we had this game against Roma coming up in the Champions Champions League and I wanted my main players to be fit and ready to tackle this test because Roma when we played them away from home were very very good and uh, we need just a point to confirm uh, you know knockout round status but of course here's your team used to start. Let go Madrid lineup. Diego Godin plays with Miranda in central defence. Gabi starts with Mario Suarez in central midfield. Mario Mandzukic is the main striker today. change. Morgan de Sancti starts in goal. It'll be Emmanuel Sint replaced as Ashley Cole, who's suspended. Trevino plays with Alessandro Florenzi on the flanks. Francesco Totti is the main striker today. See how pumped up the home fans are. They're making so much noise that you can barely hear Martin Tyler reading out the uh, the team sheet. But Roma are a, a particularly difficult side. Like we say, when we played them away from home, they tore me apart exactly the same way they did there. Francesco Totti may be 38 years old, but he's still got a fantastic finish on him. And the way this Roma team played, there's no surprise that they took the lead in the 10th minute. We were able to get a 2-2 draw at the Stadio Olimpico. So, like I say, we only need a point to guarantee ourselves a uh, knockout football in the Champions League. But actually, a a win would see us go top of the group. We'd actually go ahead of Roma on goal difference or the uh, the head-to-head, -head, as they sometimes do it in the Champions League. I'm not really entirely too sure how it works at times. I know I've put that across in previous videos, but we're 1-0 down here, so as it stands, we could go out if Sporting beat by a Leverkusen. It was only another top save from Miguel Moy. It saves like that that we say have been keeping a black out of the side. So uh, hopefully he can continue to do that, Miguel Moy, because I wasn't too keen on him when uh, we started this series. I wasn't sure whether he could you know, be the man to, uh, to make the difference in goal after losing Thibaut Courtois. But the man that is making the difference right now in the attacking sense is Arda Turan. He was just pulling Leandro Castell left and right there. I couldn't quite find a bit of space or enough space to get around the man. Then eventually just a quick turn of pace and a shift in the ball quickly from foot to foot meant that we could break through there and get ourselves the equaliser. And actually we're pushing for a, a winner here, or not necessarily a winner, but a goal to go ahead but unfortunately Arda Turan this time with a fake shot that sent the defender but he was able to recover and get the block in and it went out for a corner which unfortunately nothing came of right at the very end of the first half and this was going to be one of few chances in the second half Destro's come on for Totti as you can see and Gabby's actually going to have the ball cannon back off the bar there and unfortunately they're able to hook it clear you can see they're not pushing anyone forward whatsoever they went to park the bus and that kind of stunted any uh, any further attacks a from them because they weren't pushing anyone forward and B from me because they were so good defensively I couldn't break them down but we did get a point from the game which as you can see ensures that we go through to the next round of the Champions League with nine points from our six games. Roma end the group undefeated which is good for them and un unfortunately for Sporting they have to settle for, uh, for Europa League football and uh, of course uh, by Leverkusen are now out of all European competition without a single win in the group stage but we do now sit top of the uh, La Liga side oh, I almost said Barclays Premier League they're top of La Liga 
by uh, by a couple of points with a game in hand in fact on Barcelona behind us but they still remain undefeated and you sense it's only a matter of time before they start turning all of those draws into a consistent run of wins and really start to put the pressure on us at the top of the table so we need to make sure we stay in good form but we are in good form right now so hopefully that can continue but that's going to bring today's episode to a close guys thank you very much for watching feel free to leave the video a like if you enjoyed that'd be absolutely superb and of course subscribe if you haven't already we hit 27,000 subscribers yesterday which is absolutely superb. Thank you so much for all of the support over the past few weeks and months. Continues to baffle me the way the numbers keep going up. But the longer it continues, the happier I'll be and hopefully the happier you will be because you'll consistently get two videos a day from me that you seem to be really enjoying. So the, as long as you enjoy the videos, I'll keep pumping them out. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Check the channel page for anything you may have missed. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. As you can see, all links are in the description down below. And uh, I'll see you next time.